Here we have our new snowshoe hair. Funny story about the hair. When we put it in the game originally, we did that because, well, big animals like elk are far and away the main source of food for wolves. Um, those are, you know, big undertakings to, to find an elk herd and then try to take down an elk. And we knew we needed something smaller and, and more frequent that you'd come across just running around the environment to chase after and have a little bit of hunting with that. So we asked around with our project team and someone suggested snowshoe hares, which are pretty common in Yellowstone. So we put them in and they work real nicely. And then a few months later, Dan McNulty came on board as a new science advisor. He, was, he had been studying wolves in Yellowstone for quite a few years and has gone on to become one of the top wolf experts and continues to be one of our advisors. Anyway, so he came on and looked at the game in uh, late 2007 as we were finishing up the first version and said, what are all these hares doing here? Because in Yellowstone and the Rocky Mountains, snowshoe hares are not a big part of wolf's diet and they just look kind of odd to him. But he understood it's a game and we're trying to find the right balance. So we've kept the hairs and now we've got new models to uh, upgrade them along with the rest of everything in Wolf Quest 3. So let's take a look at how we put the hairs together and make them work in the game. So here we have the hair set up in the game as a functioning animal. The part you see is the model here with the animations and the textures and and the polygons, that's really a small part of the whole setup here. Um, other parts here under the moving part, which is the part that moves, of course, are the, uh, the feet, which we really don't care about for the hair because they don't kick wolves. And this is used for um, big animals like elk. When they kick the wolf, this will determine whether the elk makes contact. The elk's hooves make contact with the wolf and, and give it damage. We have the contact points. We looked at a lot of the bite points in recent videos. Um, hairs being so small don't have many many of these bite points so this is the, where the, um, the wolf picks it up and this is where the wolf carries it by. Um, we've got a bunch of physics here that control how it interacts with um, the world and the terrain and other animals. Um, again we've got some targeting triggers here but we're not using them for hairs because they don't um, fight back against the wolf. Here's the, the heart of the, uh, the utility AI system that Tommy, our lead developer, has created. So there's the calm, basic calm behavior, just idle, hanging out, eating grass, eating grass, wandering around, and then a random panic. Sometimes you see something just triggers them and they just go running. Um, then of course, there's fleeing from the predator if the wolf starts chasing them, and then we have a subroutine here that decides, is the wolf still chasing me? Yes or no, should I keep running or not? And then once it's been caught, it's hanging from the wolf's mouth. Um, so those are the different AI behaviors that it has, and then these are the actual actions, dead, not real active as an action, but it is an action that it does, eating grass, kind of cautious, wary, looking around, idle, fleeing, running from the wolf, just general wandering, that kind of random panic and then hanging from the mouth while the wolf is, uh, has caught it. So all that goes in to make the hares functional parts of the game world. Now let's take a look at how we make them show up in the game. The master hub, Tommy's master hub that he's uh, in charge of, and in the flock spawning manager, this is what we use for animals that we are not persistent across the entire game arc. So we have wolf packs, those are persistent, so you meet a wolf when you start playing the game. If you come back a couple hours later after reloading or whatever, you can meet those same wolves. Those packs are persistent. It's the same with elk. If you kill an elk in a herd, that elk is gone. But for other kinds of animals, we have a different kind of spawning system here for coyotes and cougars that are just, you know, we can control the odds of how frequently you'll see them in the world. Um, if you kill a coyote, well, you know, another coyote will come along. So we're gonna add hairs to this now. So I'll add another category. It just picks up uh, the same thing here. So I will change that to the hair species. And then for the flock, of course we want the hair flock. It's just one hair in a flock, um, but um, it's still called a flock. You can have as many animals spawned in a flock as you want, but for hairs, it's one. Um, so we'll set the spawning distance much smaller because they're small animals, the despawn the de distance. That's how uh, far you have to get from it for it'll despawn. 
And then I'm going to make this really small just so for testing purposes here, uh, we're sure to come across here as pretty quickly. So now running the game, let's look around and see if we can find a snowshoe hare. Switch on scent view. Look around, up, 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 there we go, snowshoe hare just now. It's leaving its smelly tracks. So can catch up to it and now, now it's gonna go into that panic zigzag mode. So it puts up quite a chase. I'm not gonna turn on the auto lock here and just see if I can catch it. So get close, there, grab it. Okay, there you can see there's a good head shake to uh, finish it off. And now I've got one snowshoe hair dead in my mouth. And what can I do with it? I can put it down and I can eat it or I can pick it up and carry it somewhere. Maybe we want to carry it to a nice uh, scenic viewpoint. Put it down, pick it up. Maybe you go down by the river, have a little uh, afternoon snack by the river. We'll show the river pretty soon in another video. I can put it down. I can pick it up. Oh, actually, I'm going to eat it right here. Just can't help myself. There it's gone. But now, because I made that spawning distance so small, here's another one. We'll reduce that spawning distance in the real game, of course. Make it a little more accurate. But uh, here we go. Got another animal added to the game.